Well, I've heard it so many times. People will just say stuff to me, and I'm just sitting there like, "What makes you think you can just say this on my podcast?" Man? Hey, I don't, I don't know. I think, I think you know. I think they don't do. I think they don't think you do your research. No, I do my research, but sometimes it's like let the audience respond to this in the comments instead yeah. of me responding to it. What's the point of me doing yeah, it? Yeah. Super MC is in the building, man. Yo, How you doing today? I yo. seen. I'm pretty sure I seen you at Daly in the Alley this year, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know how to hype a crowd, man. Yo, man, I'm I'm an MC kid. I'm mm. like if like if you can't if you can't get the energy to the crowd, how are you gonna expect to get it back? You yeah, feel me? Exactly. They came to see a performance. They didn't come to hear my record. Yes. They heard they come to hear me perform my record. Yes. You get what I'm saying? Like if if you had if you had a super MC record in the car, you would be riding. I wouldn't be there. You would just be in your shit riding with your chick. Yo, listen to my dog soup. This 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 motherfucker sweet, right? But when y'all come to the show, y'all wanna hear that, you know, that that thunder thunder ho and we we lighten that shit up. Absolutely. You get what I'm saying? You want to see me sweat on stage. You want to you wanna be like, yeah. And then when you get back in the car and listen to the record, you're going to be like, that motherfucker tow that shit up. No, I, that re-reminded me when I went to Bazaar's last concert. He did a concert like somewhere up, up north. And uh, I remembered what a master of a ceremony is. That was kind of like a, yeah. a reminder. Because people think it's like when you go to shows now, you know, everybody's so lackadaisical with how they perform. They don't even care about what they're rapping about, really. Yo. They're just on there like, I got the fans. They know my music. They're here. But an MC literally gets the crowd going. Because, you know, that's some sucker shit to be like. They know my record. And, you know, that's that's some real sucker shit. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, what if, what if you got fans that's coming... That don't know your record. I mean, people that just say, you know what, I fucking like this guy. I ain't heard shit. I just saw him on, I just saw him on the interview and I fuck with him. Well, it's cool to look like you're not trying. That's what's happening these days. It's cool I to mean, look but, like, uh, you know what, I'm just doing this. And but, I'm like, but kid, motherfuckers ain't really trying. <laughs> I'm not gonna get over there. I'm not gonna get on. I don't give a fuck. The only way I would do something like that if. Like somebody was like, "Yo, soup, I want you to perform this record for me, please, please, please," and I and I wasn't prepared, right? Yeah. We would throw the throw the record on for him. I would rock it for him like that. But me, I'm a live performer. I'm not gonna come and rap over the track. I'm not gonna do that. That's some sucker shit. That's some hip hop sucker shit. That's some. I don't know my lyrics. I didn't. I didn't take the time to rehearse my shit. I just think y'all gonna know the shit. And then what make it whack as fuck on some solid gold, you know, uh, lip singing karaoke ass MC shit is these motherfuckers be singing a song, don't even be knowing their own fucking song. How you gonna fucking perform a fucking song you don't even fucking know? You don't even fucking know the record. Like, man, hold on, man. This shit get me hot talking about that shit. This shit get me hot as fuck talking about that shit. I've been it. waiting to get on this motherfucking show and talk this shit because motherfuckers need to know. You you, you whack as hell, and I'm going to say it. You whack as hell if you got motherfuckers coming out to your show. And this is the only way that I give um, motherfucking, a, a, a motherfucker to get away with this shit. Okay, if you if you somebody like... Can you pull on that microphone? Yeah. yeah. If you somebody like, um, I don't know, anybody that's a, a major motherfucker. Right. And anytime they come to these big ass arenas and they perform in these big ass arenas, they got to have a track playing in the back because these big ass arenas got fucked up ass sound. Sound is bouncing off of everybody. They got to compensate for that. So in order to compensate for that, they got to have a plug in their ear and shit, mm -hmm. all this other technical shit so they can hear the shit. You know what I'm saying? And the entire track playing. Now, I let that go. But if you ain't a motherfucker performing at no shit like that, give us a motherfucking show. We want to hear your voice. We want to hear you. See, my voice is is, is dead because I've been rapping. You know what I'm saying? It happens, right? I want to hear a motherfucker take that breath when they jump up and down and go back into them bars. You feel me? But motherfuckers, they not performers. Yes. So I don't I don't respect a performance where a motherfucker get up there and jukebox they record like we at karaoke. That's the difference between MCing and fucking karaoke. Yes. A bunch of motherfuckers can't sing for real. They go to karaoke and sing a bunch of songs they can't sing for real. So now hip hop is turned into a bunch of karaoke ass niggas. Mm. Mm. Hey, mm. Shit, whack as fuck. I like it. I like it. It's a really truthful conversation. It is. I mean, it is, man, because, like, you know, uh, KRS once said a dope MC is a dope MC with the, without, a, with the, without a record deal, all can see. So before you got a deal or got likes or got views, you had to be a fucking dope MC. Mm-hmm. 
You know what I'm saying? And in this day and age, I guess a lot of people can cash app a motherfucker, pay this to look like a dope MC. Like, okay, look, we we you know everybody want to get on the freaks, they little jury and shit. I got a little couple nice little carrots and shit, real shit, right? Mm-hmm. But that shit don't make me a doper MC, does it? If I was sitting up here with thirty thousand to my ear talking to it, that don't make me a dope MC because I know a lot of MCs that or a lot of rappers with that type of whole view that get their ass destroyed fucking around with somebody like me or somebody in that caliber. When do you think the MCs started not becoming like the main figure of hip hop and now it's kind of more of like the trendy stuff and more of, you know, the TikTokers and whatnot? When they took out the criterias of being a fucking MC. Like I like like I heard when you were talking to Mama Shoe and shit, my dog about how you love, you know, af- athletes and shit, right? Mm-hmm. And basketball, right? So it has to be a certain criteria. You missed, mentioned Kobe Bryant, yeah. right? It's a certain criteria for Kobe Bryant to have for him to be what? The best in the world and be in the right. NBA. <clears throat> exactly. Mm-hmm. To be, and not not even just to be in the NBA, but to be the greatest of, one of the greatest of all time. Yeah. Right? It's a criteria. He had to do this. He had to do this. He had to do this and do this and do this. So a lot of these MCs, want, or a lot of these rappers or MCs, they want to be, you know, I'm the best. How you the fucking best and you ain't never battled? How you the fucking best and you can't freestyle? How, the fucking, how you the fucking best and you can't write bars? How you the fucking best... You know what I'm saying? Let me, can I go down some more? I got the answer for that. For the, from their perspective, is ticket sales. That's their answer because they're like, okay, these guys, like I said, they can get on stage and not act like they give a damn. But there's a thousand people in front of them still buying their fresh tickets and whatnot. You know what I, I mean? I mean, I mean, they got, they got, they got the power of marketing. Yeah, they got the ability to push bullshit on people at a at a rate undreamt of. Exactly. I get it. Mm-hmm. You feel me? But if you take those same people and put them in a room with a motherfucker like me, we gonna show you what hip hop is and what some make believe bullshit is. Sure. We gonna show you what a paper champ is versus a fucking gladiator. If there is a thousand people in the audience that don't know who you are and don't know who a mainstream rapper is right now, right. and they bought, and you guys have to sell the show right. you guys have to make the show fun right, right. you the mc would always win oh yeah i mean like they would come and see that motherfucker I, and i would even open up hey you 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 want to play me like i'm a little motherfucker yeah okay let me open up and i don't give a fuck open up or go i'll go first or last it don't matter <laughs> the fire is still gonna be the fire i'm gonna still cook that shit That's heat. you feel me Let's get back into your history, man. Yeah. Uh, talk about uh, Baby Super MC, man. Man, Baby Super MC is a fucking, fucking artist, you know, growing up in Highland Park, um, dealing with everything that Highland Park, you know, um, enthralls, dealing with everything that Highland Park produced, turned into and evolved from. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And and like everybody wanna talk about Highland Park and Detroit. Highland Park is in the middle with Detroit. So if you a Highland Park nigga, it's like you a east side, west side nigga or a west side, east side nigga. So really, it, it you get what I'm saying? We we the heart of that. If if Detroit is the motor city, Highland Park is definitely the engine. Definitely. Mm. Right on Woodward is where Henry Ford Motor Company built them cars and pushed that shit out. Mm. Davidson Freeway, the first freeway. In the United States, so would you, would you in consider, world, right. would you consider it a brothership that Detroit and Highland Park have, or a cousinship, or like how? What's the it, it relation? Is, it's the same. It's this. It's the Detroit is the body. Highland Park is just the heart. Okay, you get what I'm saying? Like if you say in Motor City, if we talking about, I'm five, I'm five minutes away from everything, downtown, mm-hmm. east side, west side suburbs. Do you feel like you primarily grew up as far as your own lifestyle in Detroit or Highland Park? I mean, Highland Park is like a Highland Park got its own world. It's like we got our we got our own everything. You know what I'm saying? We used to have parades down the middle with Woodward. Mm. You know what I'm saying? We used to have like we used to have all these different schools, high school and a college. What was your music career like in the very beginning? Well, you know, coming up like we used to just be like rhyming, doing talent shows and shit all over Highland Park, you know, battling, I guess, you know, local rappers that could rap. You know what I'm saying? And then um, you know, like uh, by the time I got like in like middle school or something like that, uh, high school, I formed a group with my dog Cuddy Mac and Rama called DOA, and then we got it with another group that was called the um, Confused Cynical. Then from that, um, we got with the Dreadnoughts, and that was like like about ninety three, ninety four. Mm. I got with the Dreadnoughts, and then it's been 
you know, all that since then. Did you guys make your way to the hip hop shop? Hell yeah, we used to be at the hip hop shop. You know what I'm saying? We used to fuck with hip hop shop all the time. Like, um, we used to go up there and, and rap and shit like that. Um, we had a couple times we was in there fucking around, you know, prove my guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and all them, everybody that's associated with the hip hop shop, uh, D12, um, the last ones out, um, Anybody you can name, you know what I'm saying? I fuck with them. They're my dudes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We all came up, you know what I'm saying, in this Detroit hip-hop shit. But the, the hip-hop shop was definitely one of the pinnacle places to go to to um, to do hip-hop, to to be to, to get known, to get a name. We, you know, the Dreadnoughts was really like um, in the Ebony Showcase era, you know what I'm saying? That's when we kind of made our way in, which is still the hip-hop shop era. Still, the Ebony Showcase was just the nightlife shows that we would be at like that St. Andrews you know what I'm saying then later on you had the Lush Lounge which was you know just you know furthering the solidarity of Detroit hip hop like cause when you when you go from when you go from the hip hop shop to um, Ebony Showcase eras and Timbo's and St. Andrews and then you go to a Lush Lounge era it's just showing you the progression of Detroit hip hop how it got better and better and better you know what I'm saying, and and the artists that it produced from that 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 standpoint, like the Dreadnoughts, you know, um, Fat Killers, Raw Collection, you know, Miss Corona, you know, uh, Elzai. The name goes, I mean, but Elzai then was more at the hip hip hop shop and shit. But it just um, these when you go when you go from the hip hop shop to that to that to that to that, it just shows the 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 greatest progression to me of. Detroit hip hop, how people just got better, how more MCs just got better and better, and then you got, you know, what I'm saying all the other artists that just came into that and just made it what it was, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, like a great, melting pot, right? Yeah, and but but see, like to in this day and age, we was all like fighting for position, you know, all all the fashions of rappers in Detroit hip hop we was fighting for position. Everybody was fighting to to get known, you know what I'm saying? Fighting to get this platform of Detroit hip hop to the world. You know what I'm saying? And you had, you know, you got artists like, you know, Dilla in Slum Village and them doing their shit to to get the name out of Detroit hip hop. And then you got D twelve, Eminem and them getting the, the name out, you know what I'm saying? And then you just got like everybody else to just come in after that to just solidify that we was we are a musical, you know, a musical melting pot of giants to be fucked with in this in this art form. Yeah, for sure, man. I mean, there are so many great MCs that came from here. And people forget to bring up Dilla a lot, which is kind of crazy. Probably because of early passing. Dilla, book. dope ass rapper. That's yeah. what people always want to be like. He's just a producer. No, that nigga was the dope ass motherfucking lyricist. Like, what fucking wrong? Were you more in the battle rap scene, or were you? I was more like that's that's what I did. I battle I battle rap before anything. Like before, you know, the URLs and all that. I used to be in the source battles, terrorizing motherfuckers. Who is the who was the, the biggest challenges you had in rap battles? I mean, it really wasn't no challenge for me in rap battles <laughs> i mean it was like either either like either i destroyed a motherfucker or motherfuckers played me on it or i got destroyed which is not that 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 i don't have a loss like that i don't have a lost record that's crazy like that it's a couple of motherfuckers that got with me other than that everybody got their ass whooped because like 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 i like these like today in today's battle rap like you know you got um motherfuckers a prepared like people's like you know we battling kid i'ma see you in five months right and now i'm about to study your social media i'm about to call old girlfriends it's it's what's so crazy about this shit is motherfuckers be talking about all this police shit all this police work and cops and shit if you you turn into fucking a detective when you go and looking at a motherfucker pass and shit you got to call motherfuckers up and doing all, now you doing this detective work on the nigga to go and battle him <laughs> and then you get in front of a bunch of motherfuckers and talk about how much you not a cop or how much you not the Jake nigga that's some Jake ass shit right. but anyway like when we we was in the, in this shit, it was no wait on that. It was like kids, you got a problem. We we doing this shit now. We now. What's up? We about to. Oh, you you talking shit? Hey yo, cut the beat on or not or whatever. We battling right now. Ain't no tomorrow. Ain't no next week. I'm slitting your throat tonight. Mm. See these motherfuckers got time to. They got time to Batman. You know, I can go to the cave, get on my computer in the dark. 
and do all this knowledge on you and then I'll meet you four months later mm-hmm. and I'll talk about your mother, your dead uncle, that girl in the fifth grade that did did diss you for the fat kid. Well, what do you <laughs> let's, let's look at the movie Eight Mile real quick and look at the battle scene, the one I mean I'm one at the end where he basically self deprecated himself in order to win the battle, right? So right. what what's the what's the um how realistic was that scene to you? I mean, I was in the movie. You, you were in the movie? Saying? Yeah, I oh, was okay. in the movie. And I battled Eminem. I battled Eminem. I know you battled Eminem, but I didn't know yeah. you were in the movie. Yeah, they took they took the clip out. They took it out. Oh, they, they took your shot out? Yeah. I mean, because they, I mean, honestly, I think the real reason why they took those clips out of the movie is because they shot it wrong, because they had us all battling him. And if you know, if you ever was in a battle, I wouldn't be in a battle with 16, with 15 other rappers and me would just battle all of them, which I probably would love to shit, but I'm just saying, but you, it doesn't go like that. It'd be like one versus two, three versus four, you know, five versus six, you know what I'm saying? Seven versus eight, nine versus 10. And then, you know, whoever wins after that, you know what I'm saying? Then yeah. they'll go to the next round. But, you know, that, that scene in, um, in eight mile of M battling, um, what Papa, you say Papa Dot? What's that? I mean, that's real. I mean, because M was killing, M was killing motherfuckers. He was. That's why people, to me, like they be acting like M wasn't sweet. I'd be like, man, fuck out of here. Like beyond race or whatever the fuck, everybody want kind of try to throw in the in the play. The motherfucker is fucking phenomenally dope. You know what I'm saying? And like people would say, well, M haven't d- done anything for the city. We just talking about eight mile shit. He did a fucking movie in the motherfucker. Did a movie in this motherfucker and gave and employed a bunch of Detroit artists. Gave motherfuckers checks. Shit, I still get a check from that motherfucker. Real? Hell yeah. Hey, every time y'all see 8 Mile, watch that shit, stream that shit. We so, still get checks from that shit. Thank you, Eminem. So even though, even when they take your scene out, you still make money? Hell yeah. Why'd they take your scene out, though? Because it was, it was they they shot it. I believe they they their intent of shooting it was great and to put us in there but then i think the way because of how they shot it they couldn't use it because they had him battling all four of us me marv one as is and diffusion he battled all four of us then he battled you know um the free world right so that's him battling everybody in the movie it was just you know what i'm saying you can't it, it wouldn't it wouldn't look good because there needs to be somebody that's on the- yeah somebody that's battling somebody yeah. else somebody yeah. that's battling somebody else and somebody uh. that's battling somebody else but the scenes was great you know what I'm saying did you have to come up with your own raps I me and proof me and proof was there right when they, when they did the contest for us to get in there and they picked the artist to go up there or whatever so you know me and proof sitting there you see that that's my baby right there big yeah. proof right there yeah be iron fist yeah. Big proof all day. Prove me and proof sitting there. So um, I go. I, they they pick us. We go in there, sign the paperwork. So I was writing the rhyme because I'm sitting there on on the set. I know all this shit about the movie. You know, I'm like, oh man, this shit is crazy. For for crazy as fuck. But I seen a couple other artists. They was saying they raps and shit. They didn't know they rap. So I was like, shit, I just wrote this shit. You know what I'm saying? Da 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 da, da shit crazy. I'm like, da, 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 da. we only got one take. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just going through that shit like. Pff. So me and Proof sitting there. Proof like, you got your rap and shit. I was like, man, sh- hell yeah. He was like, you worried about, you worried about him. I said, man, I'm worried. I, we- I said, I'm more worried about you on the freestyle than M is. I was like, M M M will go and write your ass in the coffin. Like you fuck with him, he be like, okay. He sit somewhere and write that shit, but like off the scratch. Like proof is the proof is that nigga that that freestyle nigga that attack, right? It's like if if like if I could look at like Eminem style and the proof style, like I would say like Eminem is Batman and proof would be Superman. Superman gonna smash your ass right now. Batman gonna be like, you know what? I'ma analyze this fight. Go back to the back cave and I'm come back and cook your ass with this flamethrower. You get what I'm saying? Um, can you bring that microphone closer? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So you're so in the movie, um you you did you 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 had your stuff lined up, you shot your scene, you only yeah, got yeah, one yeah, take. Yeah, yeah, on do. one take. I just freestyled it. I didn't I don't oh, wow. I just freestyled. That shit just popped up, you know. That's crazy. Just off the top. And who did you have to play against when you were doing the freestyle? Um M. Oh, so you were the movie scene is literally Eminem and you. Yeah, me and Eminem. So did he rehearse his part for you? No, he said the line. He said he he was saying he was saying the battle rap that he got one of the battle raps that he was using for the movie or wow. whatever. And um, but like you can't hear it 
because his mic was cut off. Uh -oh. You can't hear it, but I can hear it. I'm hearing him. He, you know, da -da -da going at crazy. me. So my mm -hmm. mic is on. I just, yo, what the fuck? How'd you build a relationship with Proof? Um, I met Proof when I was about 14 in the bathroom at uh, the Grand Quarters. The Grand Quarters is another major fucking hip-hop building in Detroit hip history. It's on West Grand Boulevard. It was like a place where everybody went to, you know, do shows and shit like that. And um, my mom had got me in there because I was too young to get in the shit. You know what I'm saying? My mother was like one of my dogs. My mom would get me in the shit that I couldn't get in. My mom was a motherfucking G. So, you know, she'd get me in the shit. My son could rap. You know, go in here and kill these niggas. You know what I'm saying? So she got me in the grand quarters, and they was having, like, this cypher in the bathroom because the music would be playing or whatever, whatever, right? So I, I slide in the bathroom, and this motherfucker's in there. You know, they're having a cypher and shit, and there's this guy in there with, with, this, with this Maurice Malone hoodie on, big-ass dreadlocks and shit, snapping his finger, freestyling. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? You know, so shit, I jump in the cypher and get to rapping, freestyling. Now we going around and around. Now, you know, like, in them days, you know, motherfuckers would be saying they raps and shit. They'd say they best little raps. They keep their raps. They got any raps. But see, when you freestyling, I can go for all day long, all day long. We going all day long. So we going around and around. These motherfuckers run out their raps. Me and Proof still going. And I looked down. I was like, damn, this nigga freestyling. And he looked at me like, this little motherfucker freestyling. That's how we met. Like, wow. bam. So you guys clicked at that moment. Clicked like, at that moment. Yeah. And from that point on, I would see him out. And he'd be like, Tss. And every time I would see him, he would always come up and put me up on the game. He would always ask something to me when I left him. You know what I'm saying? Like, you ever know somebody that, like, like somebody that shoot cameras, you know, they run up to you and be like, yo, kid, you know, next time, change your lighting. Yep. Right. That was proof to me. You know what I'm saying? This is what he done every time. Yo, soup, this, this, and this. Okay, man. And I would and then, and I would imp implement the shit. And I'd be like, yo, this nigga, you know, this is my motherfucking dog. This nigga always putting me up on some shit. So it was just wonderful to to sign to to Iron Fist, to be on Iron Fist, you mm. know what I'm saying? And work with him. Yeah. Cause like he he, you know, everybody called proof the, the mayor of Detroit. Yep. And the reason why he was the mayor of Detroit is because he was like one of the one of the biggest representatives of Detroit hip hop. Also, he was like the glue. He was he was the person that could fuse all these different pockets and corners of Detroit hip hop together. Do you see anybody like that right now as representative of Detroit that's doing that? I mean, I see I see a lot of um, Detroit uh, hip hop artists doing it. You know what I'm saying? And they doing it in their own way. Hmm. And and I and I bigged him up for doing that, but proof was proof was you know proof fucked with everybody. Like he fucked with some people that you would be like, proof, why you fucking with them? And you know what I'm saying? This is where he differed. You know what I'm saying from a lot of people because he he gave people lanes that probably didn't deserve it. He gave people lanes that deserved it. He gave people lanes that needed it. What do you think his goal was? As far as music and what was he trying to accomplish? I think he was trying to accomplish the dream of having a true Detroit industry here. Mm -hmm. More than just a handful of artists on. Because an industry is not three people on. An industry is not five people on. An industry is like thousands and thousands of people on. Like you can't say Detroit hip hop is on. Yeah, you can't. You can't say that. They try to make it seem like it is. Yeah, yeah they try to make it seem, but you can't say Detroit yeah. hip hop is on. Yeah. You can look and see the pockets of motherfuckers that's on, or the two, three, four, ten motherfuckers that's on. It's a lot of illusion going right. on. Right. Yeah. And, it's, and it's sad because we have a lot to offer. But it's like everybody want to play the shell game with this bullshit. Yeah. I think T Grizzly, when he came out with First Day Out, it really put a humongous spotlight mm -hmm. back on what new Detroit style of music mm -hmm. is and everything. But I don't. I think that kind of vanished quickly. I don't think it was Be because I, th I think I think you know the industry made their little way in. You know, snatched up the little the little nuances that they could pull from Detroit hip hop mm. and then jet it. And then now you got all these other artists sounding like Detroit motherfuckers. To me, to me, it's like, like my understanding of hip hop and how I see it, it's like we got to keep the tradition. Country music don't play that shit. 
All these other different j- genres of music don't play that shit. But hip hop will allow motherfuckers to do the corniest shit in our culture and get away with it. Mm-hmm. Hip hop is built on 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 these particular pillars, right? But like I was saying before, motherfuckers take away the criteria to to make them feel like they greater. You can't be the greatest of all time if you can't fucking dunk, do layups, shoot from the three point line, pass. Def- you feel still you can't beat like, you just can't do that it's just because of money that's it's it. because of money yeah so okay well check this out i think all the the rappers with money should come down to the basement with rappers that don't got money and see who motherfucking skills is really the skills i've seen it man and they get they and they would get their ass demolished I've seen, because I've... because my thing is the hungry is gonna always want to eat the fool. And the minute that you think in your artistry that you fool, prepare to get dined on. Ooh. I'm always hungry with this shit, kid. I, I eat, sleep, devour, breathe, mm. cry, motherfucking bleed, punch, and we'll fuck and we'll fuck around and probably kill for this shit. Yeah. You feel me? Because I could, and, and 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 the whole thing with me is, motherfuckers can't stop me with this shit. They never could. They never can. They never will. Because I remember doing this shit when it was just me, nobody around, just me in the room, conjuring yeah. words, conjuring, conjuring, spelling, spells, spelling words, conjuring. You get what I'm saying? Making these 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 rhymes up. So. It doesn't matter to me whether a million motherfuckers fuck with me or them two motherfuckers that came in this door with me. Right. I'ma still give you, you know what I'm saying, energetic, over battery powered ass lyricism. Because this is what hip hop is. In this day and age of hip hop, every Rock Kim should be a a a, a Dr. Seuss book in the way that hip hop should be right now. If Rock Kim is a Dr. Seuss book, in the way that hip hop should be now, then what level would hip hop be on? It sure wouldn't be this bullshit that niggas rapping. But if you take out the criteria of being a dope MC, then this is the fuck you get. Yeah. Everybody getting a pass. And this is we in the age where motherfuckers ain't telling motherfuckers they whack. Motherfuckers ain't telling motherfuckers they can't rap. Motherfuckers ain't telling motherfuckers they ain't got talent. Nigga, you need to just go work at GM. You need to just go work at Costco. Nigga, you need to just go cut lawns. But no, nah, everybody got a dream. But some people not living their dream. They're living a glossy ass nightmare that they ain't woke up from. Right. Motherfucker, you are not dope. You are not sweet. But then in the era, dog, where you could look online and absorb hip hop. These motherfuckers still don't know shit. Like, I watched this show. You know I fuck with your show, right? Appreciate it. I fuck with your show. Thank you. Right? Okay. I watched this show, and I watched motherfuckers sit on this couch and say they was the first to do shit. Well, you know what? I'm the first nigga to come on your show and say I ain't the first nigga to do shit. I'm just adding on to hip-hop. I'm not the first nigga to do shit probably in Detroit hip hop. Probably maybe maybe I'm the first nigga from from Detroit hip hop to be on a a big ticket show. I was on a Parkers and a Moesha show. Mm. I don't know other motherfucking Detroit hip hop that was on that show. How'd that come about? Uh, I was out in uh, Proof sent me out to motherfucking uh LA to be in a Blaze battle. I was in a Blaze battle out that motherfucker. My dog Tone worked on the, the Moesha show. He was a art part of the art direction on Mo, on the Moesha show. So we I go down there for the Blaze battle and shit. Go down to the show for the tape and the filming. I'm sitting there, Federal Star and um, Brandy is doing the tape and it's live and shit. We live. We at Gower Studio and shit. Boom. So in between that. They got like this part where they'll be like looking for talent and shit. Like if you talented, hey, can you crack a joke or something while we while they doing the break and shit? So in the middle of the break, they was like, yo, we got talent. So my dog Subliminal was with me. He's like, yo, don't don't go, go fuck with him, fuck with him. I'm looking like the, the lady behind me, like, yeah, 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 yeah. So they come over there. They play the um fre- um they, they play that um get the fuck up, <clears throat> feral monts. Like Godzilla shit. I go the fuck in. To the point, Brandy coming out, Ray J coming out, the producers coming out, Master P and M was on the show that time. They came out, 
They like, what the fuck? Who the fuck is that going the fuck in? They like, yo, this motherfucker sweet as fuck. So they blow the whistle and shit. They got to go back to shooting, right? So they sit back down. So Brandy and Fredro Starr is at the cafe. He talking about, you know, him and his group about to go on a tour. This is in the episode, right? So before, they was just talking about New York and Chicago. But now that I rapped and I said I was from Detroit, he added Detroit into the the script. Wow. It wasn't in the script. He added it into the script because I was there. And then after that, you know, I got to meet Brandy in the cast. And, That's awesome. Oh, shit, hell yeah. Yeah, legendary, bro. For sure. And yeah. I was on the Parker show. I got to meet Countess Vine and all them too. Countess Vine's my motherfucking dog and right. shit. Her, Fred Joe Star, all of them. Fred Joe Star wanted to wanted to manage me at that time. Cause I had we had just we was out in New York. Um, where Proof had won the, um, the source battle and shit, and I met Sticky Fingers in front of the Kit Kat Club, mm. him and Evil D. So then I'm in fucking L.A. on the, on the fucking uh, Moesha show, and I'm fucking with Fredro Starr and shit. So I tell Fredro, I'm like, yo, nigga, I know your nigga Sticky Fingers and shit. He's like, nigga, you don't know Sticky Fingers. I said, nigga, I don't know Sticky Fingers like you know him, but I know the nigga, I met the nigga. I'm telling you, he see me and know, you know me. You feel me like yeah. that? He's like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So we went to the Hollywood Athletic Club. Right, this is after the tape and the shit. Um, that night, he's like, we to the Hollywood Le- Athletic Club. Me and Tony shit. So we come there, we stand in line and shit. We get up to the door. Magic Johnson pull up, get out the limo with a gang of motherfuckers. Him and Magic Johnson walk through the minute they parted that bitch like the Red Sea for this nigga. I'm like, damn. So then motherfucking uh, Fredro Star walk up. Him and Sticky Fingers. He was like, yo, what's up, Soup? I'm like, yo, what up, Fredro? What's up? What's up, my dog? You good? He's like, yeah, this is my dog, Sticky. Sticky looked up. Sticky was like, yo, what's up? Yo, what's up, little Detroit? Uh, I said, ah, what's up, Sticky and shit. So Fredro looked, I said, I told you I know Sticky, nigga. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Because that's what Sticky was calling me and we was in New York. He was like, little Detroit. Because I had on this Highland Park jersey, Highland Park baseball jersey, and I had on mm. a, um, a white Detroit cap, white Detroit, um, f- um, um, you know. And he, and he was like, little Detroit, you know what I'm saying? That's fire, man. Yeah. yeah, man, I've been around, man. I fuck with a lot of motherfuckers. A lot of motherfuckers know what's up with me, you know what I'm saying? What was it like um going up against Eminem in the rap battle? I mean, it was it was it was funny because you know what I'm saying I know him, you know what I'm saying? I know proof in them. All the my they're my dogs, you know what I'm saying? But this was like some shit that was like about to be on fucking fucking movie. Did you did you ever battle him outside of the movie? No, uh-uh, uh-huh. no, I was trying to. I remember uh-huh. this one time, uh I guess they was in Timbo's one night. I was trying to get there get there to get at him and shit cause I heard I, I, just, I just heard about him you know what I'm saying I heard about him like yo M- Eminem I was like Eminem oh, okay I'm gonna run into him yeah cause I heard that the hip hop shop was like uh, a lot of the cats that are like relevant now even like Royce and stuff like that they're all there just going yeah, for hours and hours yeah we all was there we all was there I mean, hours everybody was there like you know what I'm saying we went in there and, and battled motherfuckers and shit you know what I'm saying like it, it, that was the hip hop shop was the pinnacle of that shit. That shit was like one what a rhythm kitchen and all that before the, the hip hop mm. shop. But the hip hop shop is definitely one of those Plymouth rocks of of hip hop. Yeah, know? it's interesting. They changed their name now. Now it's called Bank Rose Productions. I kinda do wish they kept the name. That I mean, been, you, know, cool. you know, to me to me, one thing I get pissed at in Detroit hip hop is the fuck shit. It's like, you know, I love that the new generation is coming in doing their thing, but y'all motherfuckers can't erase history. You can't fucking erase history. The the Maserati wouldn't be shit without the Model T. I don't give a fuck. Because you want to know why? Without the Model T, that little crank up ass car with them little bicycle ass tires, you wouldn't have the, the, the Maserati if not for that. Yeah. You wouldn't even have it. There's an artist named Chaos, uh, Kevin Brenton from Toronto, and he made like a whole album about... Um how hip hop is dying. He did this in like the early 2000s. Chaos, he made that super fly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Chaos yeah. is sweet as fuck, yeah. man. He's sweet he made as fuck. Joyful Rebellion and like mm-hmm. the whole tape was basically about like how the hip hop is dying and MCs are ruining music. It's all about money and they're, you know, ruining the because future generation. Because my thing is, my thing is, if I could pay a bunch of motherfuckers to let me in the door with a whack ass skill, because that's all motherfuckers are doing. They paying to get in the door. Like, I remember when it was, it was about the talent. If you were sweet as fuck, that's what it was. Yeah. That's all hip hop was about, sweet as fuck. You got to be sweet as fuck. The DJs wouldn't let you get on if you weren't sweet as fuck. What do you appreciate from this era right now in Detroit music as far as which artists do you actually pay attention to and say it's its closest resemblance to hip hop or just following like what the cultural um, establishment you guys built was from the beginning? Like how you guys established hip hop in the 90s? Like who do you see that's relevant to that now or that's keeping that alive still? 
Um, it's a lot of artists, and I I don't want to go down the list and not name some motherfuckers, and then go down the list and name some motherfuckers, and oh, then okay. I want to. But to me, the art like you could look at you could look at. You can look at my social medias and see who I fucks with in that respect. You know what I'm saying? And other artists that might be keeping it, that 1,000, I don't know of them. But the other artists that I do know that are keeping it 1,000, I fuck with them and they fuck with me. And they know what the fuck is up. Right. And I promote their music and, and talk about them and their relevancy to the culture. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not. My thing is... This new Detroit hip hip this new Detroit style of rapping off beat, I fucking hate it. I hate it too. I fucking hate niggas rapping off beat. Because the whole thing, rap is rhythm and poetry cuts, create sound effects. You might catch up if you follow the records. Like the, the, what makes what makes a rap artist not a fucking poet is the fact that I can glaze a track with the words. Mm-hmm. It's the fact that you could put a beat on and I could spout this bullshit. Over this melody and that shit tongue lashes you with every with every drop of the beat. Yeah, man. I totally agree with you. I don't get it either. I tried to. But no, that's that motherfucker on some fucking drugs. Motherfuckers is on some fucking drugs that got them moving faster than the beat, and then they get into the studio and rap faster than the beat, and then <laughs> motherfucker probably got guns on them yeah. with, with about three other high ass niggas in the studio with guns on them, and then the engineer too scared to tell them that shit was whack. Mm. Oh, or that shit. Hey, look, man, you're off beat. What you say, motherfucker? Like, <laughs> the fuck? Like, y'all niggas, like, my thing is, and then for a motherfucker to say that's actually sweet. I know this is like kind of a, this is kind of a tough question, but like you said, with, with what proofs, um, what you assume his goals were and what he wanted to create out of, create out of everything. A real Detroit industry. Right. A real Detroit industry where real Detroit artists get paid. So where we all get money, we all riding around in some nice shit, we all doing some sweet shit, and it's a real fucking industry. Do you think if he hadn't obviously lost his life, unfortunately, that things would be different right now, or do you think that it's still it would be a whole? It would be a lot different. Because his influence on the game meant something. What he said meant something. Maybe not meant something to a lot of people, but definitely it meant something to a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? And I don't think that um I don't think that the culture would have suffered that mega blow if he was still alive. Whoa. I think I think a lot of shit would still be in place if he was still alive. Because you know when he died, a lot of businesses closed, a lot of people got the fuck on. Because Proof, like I said, proof was like the chewing gum. He was bubble gum. He was fucking tape. He yeah. was fucking, you know, sticky glue. He was like, you know, that them hands that just had shit pulled together and he was able to mm. to pull not only industry people, but citywide people and just any kind of motherfucker together. The nigga was just the nigga the nigga just was he just he was a he was a gem. He was a fucking he was regal. He was something different. Um, is there any uh, projects right now you got coming out? I got, man, hold on, man. This is fucking shit. Yeah, what you okay. got? Yo, man, Seen a big I, Ben. Yeah, I know I bought the Ben and shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I wanted, to, I wanted to show this shit to you, dog. This is a motherfucking Super MC Obsidian The Fallen One Limited Edition box set, right? Yo, this motherfucker right here. This motherfucker right here is about the size of a fucking shoebox. Yeah, that's big. You feel me? But the beautiful thing is you get all these beautiful things in here. Like, check this shit out. Yeah. Listen, listen. Three seventy five for three seventy five, right? Three hundred and seventy five dollars? Yeah, three hundred and seventy five dollars. Oh, okay, gotcha. You. you get this beautiful, dope ass box. Both albums on both sides because the obsidian is a double album, right? Okay. Sweet ass box, right? Boom, boom. Get the little sweet ass obsidian angels on the front of your shit. Okay. You feel me? You bam. You open this motherfucker up, right, kid? Yes, sir. Right. And then you, and then while you looking, you can start any motherfucking wear inside the motherfucking box. Mm. Any motherfucking wear inside the motherfucking box. Okay. So look, you pull this out. First of all, the grand 
marquee piece of this motherfucker is Super MC action figure, bro. Yeah, an action figure. Yo, I got a Super MC action figure. And this one actually got my head on it. <laughs> That's that? sweet. Fucking so you have your own action figure. Yeah, got my own action figure. You got a replaceable head. You can put the, the obsidian head on there. You could leave the Super MC immortal head on there, right? Very cool. Yo, okay. Collectible. Collectible, right? I'm on, I'm I'm one of four. Hex Murder got a uh a action figure. Jay Dilla got an action figure. D12 got an action figure and Eminem, right? But the obsidian come with the wings and shit, right? Come with the wings. You put the wings in the back, right? Very cool. Okay, so action figure. Then you get the obsidian black card with both albums on it, right? High flash drive, right? Pop that bitch up and like, bow like Oh, that's a flash drive. Yeah, you stick that bitch in your car like, bitch, I got this. Yeah, I got soap shit in my car, bitch. He. Like, bam, right? Okay, check it out. Then you got you got this the double CD for the double album, right? Double mm. album. Got the the black one, got the the light one, you know, Alpha and the Omega. I'm the Alpha with the Omega. Beginning with Alpha and so play, I'm gonna rock him here. Okay, look, then on top of that, right, you get the motherfucking comic book, kid. You got the motherfucking comic super books. MC. Obsidian so you got your own comic, comic book. book. Motherfucking comic book, dog. Look. And I'm at the Fox. Bust it. I'm at the Fox bust it. I'm at the Fox bust it. Very right, cool. Man. Then you get the dog ass obsidian t shirt, you know what I'm saying? With the with the angel on this shit, right? Bam bam. Then you get the obsidian sunglasses, bam, 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 right? Then you get the motherfucking obsidian stones, right? To protect your ass, ward off all that negative wuju and energy motherfuckers be coming with. He you just put your shit in your pocket and fuck that shit. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So you get all of that in this wonderful motherfucking box set. Beautiful, man. Yeah, man. Motherfuckers ain't got that shit. They got to step their motherfucking game up. Yeah, man. That's all, that's actually awesome. I like that. Yeah. Action figure. Uh, yeah. You got wings going on. You got yeah. two CDs in there. That's yeah, fire. Yeah. USB stick. Yeah. That's heat, man. Yo, and then you know what's so fucking crazy, though, kid, mm. about this shit? Is, you know, all, all the shit that's pertaining in that box, right? Mm. That book. Oh, yeah, the microphone, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All the shit that's in that box is pertaining to the shit that I've been through, that I went through. You know, I, I was in that fucked up ass accident and shit, right, a couple mm -hmm. years ago. It's mm -hmm. almost, it's three years now. It'll be three years on October 10th. Mm -hmm. October 10th, I'll be celebrating fucking three years of not being fucking dead. That's some real shit, right? Yeah. And since then, I've been healing up and shit to produce and come out with this fucking record. Very you know what I'm saying? Cool. With the aid of Mama Shoe, some boy records in the Avalon Village. You feel me? This fucking record is fire. No, man, I'm excited for you, bro. This is yo, something new. The first person to bring an action figure on the show. Yo, yo, check it out. I am a living action figure. I'm a fucking hood hero. I'm a, I'm the Michigan Marvel, the Wayne County Warrior, the Highland Park Hero, the Detroit Defender. Man. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, MCs, this, it's hard to come across a real MC, man. I was at a uh, Cat Williams concert a few days ago. Paid a lot of money for these seats, man. And uh, one thing that shocked me is this this female MC came on the stage mm -hmm. and she started rapping on stage. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching her at Cat Williams concert. I'm watching this female rapper. She's going nuts on stage. I'm hearing a roar of cheering, audience going crazy behind me, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, she's not that good. Why are people cheering? So I turn around and literally nobody's cheering. There's nobody moving. Nobody's, everybody's just staring at her. I'm like, wait a minute. I realized that she put a cheering track on the back of her song that she was performing. So I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh, they're capping in live time now. Like, this is like a yo, live stream of capping. Yo, hey, yo, this woman had nobody cheering, but yet the song had the back track. And I was like, oh, maybe it's just the song. She did three more songs after that, and all of them had laugh tracks. So I figure when people are posting her on Instagram, she wants it to make it seem like a bunch of people are going crazy for her when they're not. Hey, I yo, was done. I was about to leave the concert. I was like, bro, I know I paid like $600 for these tickets and stuff, but I think I'm just going to leave, Cat. I'm sorry, you booked this? Like, come on now. When fake it till you make it is on fucking steroids. Mm -hmm. Like, that shit is crazy to me. Like, yeah. to me, it's like all this shit that a motherfucker... It's like everybody is doing a bunch of other shit in the game to... To hide the fact that they don't got fucking real talent. Exactly. These motherfuckers, like, okay, okay, I'm okay. My thing is, if your car and your house and your jewelry and what you got and all that fly shit is produced off your talent, you sweet as fuck, right? That's sweet as fuck. 
your talent garnered you all these exciting gifts and wonderful things. Fabulous and wonderful powers were revealed to me the day I held aloft my magic sword and said, By the <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but when you get, you you know, I'm not knocking how a motherfucker get their shit. But you ain't got to work at a at a job and say that hip hop paid for your car when your job paid for your car. Right. You ain't got to be doing X, Y, Z to say that X, Y, Z paid for your jewels and then lie and say that hip hop paid for your jewels. Let's be let's be real about this shit. You know what I'm saying? If you're not making money off your lyrics, you're not making money off your shit. Right. If you can't sell a CD, if you can't sell a, a record, then that's that's cool. You know what I'm saying? But the front shit to me is when motherfuckers is around here doing everything, everything else, and they fronting like they talent is the thing that's that's preserving them. You know what I'm saying? When it's not, and we know it ain't. But the fact of the matter is that these motherfuckers is promoting it, and then people is yupping it up. I'm like, damn, where did people get so fucking stupid? Exactly. Keyword. Keyword for today is integrity. Yo, Keyword man. is integrity. Super Integ- MC, man. Integrity is is it's a bad time for us. Bro. Kid, integrity is me talking to you about you, right? Mm. When you ain't around. Mm. The same. Why you here? That's integrity. Me talk, yo, kid, you my guy. Yeah. Right? You my guy. But then when I'm a, I'm around, I'm around my people, and you know, Kid L my guy, right? It's my dude. Fucks with Kid L. It ain't shit changed. That's integrity. Now when I'm over here with somebody else, kid, my dude, yeah, fuck with him. You know, get on the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's integrity. But when you don't have integrity, I'm talking to you like you my dog, and I get over with them and then shit on you, and then I'm over here with them shitting on them and you. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? These motherfuckers, man, that, that's a whole nother thing in this in this hip hop shit. We could probably talk about that fake ass shit forever. But I just, to me, what I want out of Detroit hip hop and for Detroit hip hop is for motherfuckers to come with solidly, quam, solidly music, quality sound music. I was about yes. to say quam. I was about to, <laughs> I was about to merge quality and sound together and make a whole nother <laughs> fucking word. You know what I'm saying? But that's that's what I I I. I want and I and, and damn near I pray to the hip hop guys for that shit. I yeah. want I want Detroit lyricists and Detroit artists and performers to get off of that rapping over their tracks and shit at, at open mics. If you got to do that at an open mic, stay your open mic ass at home. Yes. Stay your ass at home until you learn those words. Stay your ass at home until you learn that music. Stay your ass at home until you learn that fucking song. Don't come out at a fucking place and then perform a song. <clears throat> Man, you know what I fucking really hate? You know what I fucking really hate? You know what I fucking really, you know what I motherfucking really hate? I hate when motherfucker get on the mic and they got to give a disclaimer. Well, I I don't know this song, but I'm going to try to, well, bitch, don't perform it. <laughs> I, well, this, we just left the studio and I'm, well, don't perform it. Yeah. Why come, why come and give us your shittiest and, and then get mad when we don't clap for it? Yes. I'm with you on all this. You're not, you're not gonna catch me, kid, nowhere. Performing now. If I'm if I'm there freestyling, oh, I'm coming off the head. We as soon as the beat come on, I'm fucking clowning. But if I'm there to perform my records or perform my song, if I haven't rehearsed it, if I haven't practiced it, if I don't fucking know it, I'm not gonna get on the stage. I'm not gonna get fuck the stage. I'm not gonna get on hip hop's altar. And embarrass myself or the rap guys that I pray to. So these motherfuckers don't don't keep this tradition of hip hop serious. See, I take this, I take this is I take this more serious than just the poem. You get what I'm saying? I'm I'm dropping rock him quotes tonight, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, but my thing is, this is what it is. This is our culture. But a bunch of motherfuckers is playing our culture like it's some bullshit. That's why you get the bullshit out here. And then when you got the bullshit out here, you get force fed the bullshit. So now everybody think the bullshit is the regular shit. Yeah. And it's not. Like hip hop had many faces. It had NWA, Salt and Pepper, Run DMC, LL Cool J. You know what I'm saying? All these Public Enemy. It had all these different faces and different lanes that motherfuckers was rapping in. Cause NWA show wasn't rapping about the same shit Public Enemy was rapping about. Nor was they rapping about the same thing Salt and Pepper was rapping about. Nor was LL Cool J. Nor was KRS One. Nor was MC Light. Nor was, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. It was lanes for the shit. Not everybody want to try to compress all those lanes into one lane. 
and everybody got to be this. It's almost like a motherfucker got to have a hip hop rap gangster kit to, you you know, you have to rap about this and be this and wear this and this and that's that and this and this and that. And that's some bullshit because they feed motherfuckers McDonald rap. That ain't hip hop. Hip hop is like going to your favorite restaurant and they got all the shit there and it's top quality food. Facts. Ain't none of that shit. Ain't none of that shit some low grade. And that's what these motherfuckers didn't get in this gym of hip hop. Like I, t- like I told motherfuckers, I say, motherfuckers came in the gym of hip hop and they saw all these Michael Jordans playing basketball. They saw all these Michael Jordan rappers, right? And these motherfuckers was like, holy shit, it's the little Michael Jordan, it's the white Michael Jordan, it's the black Michael Jordan, it's the fat Michael Jordan, it's the girl Michael Jordan, it's the tall Michael Jordan, it's the short Michael Jordan, mm. it's a group of Michael Jordans over there. Fuck. Yeah. How the fuck are we going to rap like that? It was like, you know what? Fuck that. We're going to start the lame niggas <laughs> game of hip hop rapping yes. where we can say, where we can knock all these criterias of being a dope MC away yes. and then we could be all this whack shit and then guess what? We're in an era where everybody wants to pat you on the back for mediocrity. You feel me? So nobody's going to tell us that we're weak because guess what? The next motherfucker standing to, next to us is weak as hell too. Yeah. See, we didn't play that shit on the mic. The D, I remember when the DJs didn't play that shit. Your ass got on the mic and started rapping whack. They was, yeah. they was cutting the mic off your ass. Motherfucker come up there and sandman your ass. Just think about that. One of the greatest shows Sam. in performing history, the Apollo Theater, mm-hmm. was the damn near the rock of all ages of going somewhere and performing and making a star, right? And they kick your ass off stage. And they would kick your <laughs> ass off. The motherfucker would come out dancing. They would cut. Mm-hmm. Get your whack ass off the stage. Hip hop needs to bring back the Sandman. I was doing that. I was doing music reviews. I was fire at it. I was kicking people off of their careers. There's people who literally stopped rapping because of me. It was awesome. Hey, kid, you I, should. You should yeah. I'm considering it. Look, man, I got, we got we to gotta close out, yeah, but man. I'm going to have you back on. Oh, That's man, for fun. sure, we'll man. It was great. It was history. great. It was great. Super MC was in the building. We're at Parallel Sound Studio, Hello Visuals, Shooting Productions. We're out. Yeah. Peace. I was killing it. Man. Which music? Oh, you going to put... Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, man. Hey, check this out, yo. Everybody, I love y'all out there. You want to know anything about Super MC, Super MC, the city, and the new music is out, check out supermc.com. S-U-P-A-E-M-C-E-E.com. Yo. Woo.